My name is Shauna Rewald. I'm the Founder Program Coordinator here at the Kendra Scott Women's Entrepreneurial Leadership Institute. We refer to it as KS Welly. And tonight um, is all about learning from our founders. Our Founder Program is a program that spotlights, equips, and empowers entrepreneurs. And we really help uh, founders take their business to the next level. So I'm going to now have you, Zoe, kick it off and tell us a little bit about you and your business. Sure. Um, so uh, my business is called Valor. It's a virtual reality platform for quadriplegic patients. And I kind of started it in inspiration of my father, who was diagnosed with ALS. And um, the journey kind of started with, um, you know, quadriplegic patients have an immense loss of novelty, a sense of identity and agency when they're unable to really connect with the world around them because of their loss of function. And that was also true with my dad. And for him, you know, there's, there's sort of that loss of identity when he's not really able to do the same things anymore. Um, and so the platform that we're creating is sort of in service of helping them kind of get a sense of, of agency back when they're like, giving them more immersive lifelike experiences in a virtual world where maybe they don't even have to be disabled anymore and they can access everything that an able-bodied person can. Hi, my name is Aki, or Akila Tejwani, and I run Aki's Cupcakery, where we make baked goods for people with dietary restrictions and share profits with kids' charities in the community. So I started this whole thing because I was a type 1 diabetic, or I am a type 1 diabetic, and I couldn't find any good baked goods to eat growing up, and my family grew up with like dietary restrictions as well. So I created my own recipes, I shared them with friends and family, I sold it in my school, and they were all a hit. And so with the help of my father and my sister, I was able to take it off in December 2019. And we have made $51,000 in revenue up till on our first year. And then up till date, we've given around $12,000 back to kids' charities. I'm Sophie. I'm the co-founder of STEM News. We, um, so I guess going back, I'm a grad student. And um, as an undergrad, I was, um, a biology major and I went to the career center and asked them what I could do with my biology degree and I got the typical well you can go to that school or grad school and I was like uh, I'm not thrilled about that but um, and I knew there must be other opportunities but I just wasn't aware of them and even at the career center they weren't telling me what they were and I didn't have um, access to professionals in the types of jobs that I may, might be going into so um, women in STEM are underrepresented both in the in higher education and in the workforce and um, we wanted to provide so with other grad students at UT um, I got together um, and we put our heads together and said okay like how can we build community and support to provide access to those jobs and um, through that we I first built a student organization here called the Society for Advancing Gender Equity in STEM or SAGES um, and then we built a mentorship program within that. And now um, we've actually had mentees that landed jobs and internships at their mentors' companies. And uh, inspired by that, we started STEM Use to help patch this leaky pipeline, per se. Thank you so much for sharing. Well, we're going to start with asking, what does community mean to you? And that's a question for each of you. Um, well, I think in one sentence, community means um, the people that help to inform and guide your entrepreneurial journey. So I guess that's different for everybody based on like what industry you're working in, what sort of skill sets you feel like you need to prime, what sort of like mentorship you feel like you really need. Um, so I feel like it's it could be anyone from friends and family to industry leaders that help to really inform your entrepreneurial journey. To me, community is where a group of people come together under one common interest. So, like, it could be anything, and in, in my case, it's people that have dietary restrictions or want to, or even want to give back to the community. And so that's what I kept in mind when starting my business. Um, I, I guess for me, it's a, a place, a space, or um, a group where you feel um, belonging and a sense of support. And I guess that's pretty. That's been pretty integral to um, STEM use. So not just 
um, in terms of building the business, but as the, the product itself, per se, the um, community that we're building there. And what does the community within your business look like? I know so few kind of just touched on this, but if you both can share as well. Sure, so um, for me, it would, it kind of starts from my, my dad, my family, um, and then it's also the patients that I deal with, quadriplegic patients, these support groups that come from those, the advocacy groups of those groups, um, as well as just industry leaders in the VR sector and tech sectors, um, all the stakeholders, including the medical professionals, the clinics, um, all the different stakeholders involved in, you know, an ALS patient's life and um, in a quadriplegic patient's life, um, all of these people that sort of inform what I want my product to be, where the need is, where the gaps lie in the sort of life of these patients, but also mentors, startup mentors, people that have um, the found her community has been an example of that, just uh, people that have gone through their entrepreneurial journey that have had successful startups that can really help you to really find out like what path you're willing to take, especially for you know this is my first startup. Um, it's a lot of learning from people that have excelled at this stuff, and um, kind of that that's what my community would really be. Yeah, um, for me, it's like it started in family first of all because my dad he helped me with my seed funding and my sister helped me i could not have done this without her like it was helping me manage my orders and then my fa my family overall like their whole dining room has been turned into our baking area so i'm like forever grateful to them but then even beyond that the kids charities that we work with we've been able to partner with them and then like help them in their events and then get our name out there that way as well and even our customers as well. Like in our first year, we were able to get over 200 five-star reviews because of how, how much they, they wanted to support us and our product and our brand. Oh, Sophie, you can touch on it too. Um, okay. uh, so I guess, yeah, for us, it's um, we have a community of mentors and mentees, and then as well, um, outside of that, for the business itself, we so family is one, or even just really everybody who is trying or helps me um, you know, contextualize my role as a founder and um, a scientist outside of my um, role as a founder and everything, and helps keep me grounded and understands um, that I'm like that I have all of this on my plate and how to um, how to juggle it and make sure that um, we're all staying sane. And <laughs> um, but then on the uh, when it comes to the mentors and mentees, I guess. Um, one thing that we uh, have really focused on initially, of course, is those individual interactions and kind of fostering um, that like support, the one-on-one -on -one support, um, which I think is really helpful. But then we also are trying to open it up more as we grow to um, provide that that community where there's they have access to the other people in the program who are also open to sharing their experiences and able to. Um, yeah, give those insights and that just their one mentor or mentee might not be able to. Um, and that one thing, I'm sure like this might or might not come up in another question, but I think like um, the one point I wanted to make is that uh, all of this takes time. Like <laughs> building community is not something that is that happens overnight. And so I think it's normal probably as a startup founder to feel like your community is small, and um, it does take a while to cultivate that. Yeah, it really does take time. Um, so I, I want to hear from each of you. How did you start building community staffs around your business? Yeah, so um, it was definitely a lot of like, I met one person, and that person led me to another person, and led me to another person. And, you know, it just starts with that first conversation that you have where you put yourself out there. And I think one of the big skills that I've had to really grapple with as a female entrepreneur in the tech sector is imposter syndrome and feeling like I wasn't, I didn't belong in those rooms. I, what business do I have talking to this person? You know, like I'm just in college. What do I? What am I talking about? You know. So I think just getting out of my head and really realizing that I have something great that I'm working on, and this is something that I'm doing to help others. And I think putting it in the perspective 
perspective of like me having this conversation and me getting past this imposter, imposter syndrome is in service of my dad and people like him um, really helped me to get past that and really helped me to have those conversations and get myself in those rooms and have a seat at the table without feeling like I didn't belong. Um, and I think just outside of that, just taking initiative and looking for people that are within your you know, industry or within some, in some level could be associated with what you're working on and having those conversations, but not just with like specific types of people, but with a broad array of different types of people who can bring different perspectives to your project. And I think another big skill and another big consideration in that is just to remain open-minded, to keep your ideas sort of fluctuating, because you know, there's when you get when you start to get feedback and if you're really like locked in like what you think your idea should be, then other people's feedback isn't really gonna help you. It's just going to give you, okay, yeah, like I've talked to this many people, but has it really helped your idea at all? For me, it was especially in starting, it was reaching out to the kids' charities and like picking which kids' charities would align with my values the most. Uh, my family and we like have the core values of Hub PC, health and happiness, upright, gratitude, pay forward, and continuous learning. And finding kids' charities that align with those values and would help us grow our business in that way was, was a great starting point. And then from there, it's finding there is finding the, the next step, like how do I make sure I'm re reaching like all of San Antonio, where we're located, San Antonio, and that was through creating like a Google page, asking for reviews, and so now like when we, when you search up like being cake San Antonio, we'll be on the top of the page in like an actual location, and like she was saying like uh, imposter syndrome, like I, I'm a home baker, like <laughs> I don't belong on the first page of Google, but it, it took a lot of um, like, com uh, Gosh, what's the word? Networking. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I guess so. Uh, we, I, like um, Zoe said, I think the like just the initial like one-on-one -on -one interactions are where we got started, and just trying to and like getting to know people on a personal level and explaining to them what it is that you're trying to build, and really helping them see the the mission and helping them connect with that so that they can better understand how they can help you and not feeling bad about that either. Like, I think it's easy to feel like you're taking more than you're giving sometimes, but um, in the early stages especially, like if you're looking for advisors or if you're looking for um, people that are gonna then be able to further your connections and um, like, and help you build that community, um, you're like, oh, well, I'm asking so much of them, but if they, um, if, they're, if they resonate with your mission, then they're often more than willing to do that, and then you never know what you're gonna be able to give back to them in return, or what they're gonna get out of it, even if it's just fulfillment, but you, you know, beyond that even. So, um, uh, I think that's all I want to say. <laughs> I know for me, having a, as an entrepreneur myself, I know that having a community is such a big piece of my growth, and my ability to step into confidence. Do you have communities that support your entrepreneurial journeys? And um, if so, what is the community you feel most connected to or supported by? Sure, so um, I think I definitely have a broad community that sort of helps me keep me grounded, helps support me, and helps grow my the mission of my uh, company. And I think the biggest one that really helps to guide me is the, the community of, of the patients. And really, I think the biggest thing that I've learned throughout um, starting Fowler is that um, it all comes down to the patient, it all comes down to the end user. And if that, you know, really empathizing with those people and really getting, getting that person's day-to-day -day life on a level where, like, you can really understand that deep need that they have and really get that, you know, is this really a need that you have or am I just reflecting what I think your need is onto you? Um, and I think a lot of the conversations that I have with um, consumers is like, I don't even tell them what I'm doing. I just get to know them. I just have a deep conversation with the person and have built that relationship. So I think that community is what really 
I place the most priority in, and I feel that my direction in my company is most guided by. Yeah, and for me, like especially with um, with the baking and everything, having the community of the customers, like you were saying, is very important because it like their opinion matters too, and that that's how you that's how I that's at least that's how I was growing as an entrepreneur. Going in, I was like. Like more more specific example, I was like, I'm not going to make any baked goods with buttercream because I don't like buttercream. But then <laughs> I found that was that was definitely the wrong way to think <laughs> because that's that wasn't customer customer demand and making vegan products without their without their vegan buttercream making it look beautiful was next to impossible. So just having an open mind and that that came a lot from the customers and their feedback to me and my business. Um, for us, I think we've been really supported by the different organizations and groups that we've kind of forged um, relationships with. So, for instance, the organization that we came out of um, was uh, the one that I started Stages, and so we've had, that was where our original uh, group of mentees kind of originated, um, but then we've had, like, see, we've continued that relationship with Sages and formalized it through um, a collaboration where we still have committee members on the Sages committee who are helping us to continue to build the program here at UT. Um, so we're receiving a lot of support there. Um, but then we have developed other relationships with like the Austin Community College, Fire Technology Program, and now their Career Center, and we're going to be growing that way. So. Um, and but I mean ultimately it is really like y'all said user and customer driven. So um, for us we listen a lot to our mentors and mentees. And um, interestingly enough, like the customer side hasn't been as vocal. So um, we we have been very open and um, honest with potential customers about we really want y'all to be a part of this building process. And that hasn't been something that they've been as like people are busy and sometimes they just don't have that much feedback and it can actually be a little bit like dismaying to an extent to be like we want your feedback and then they're like eh. <laughs> so uh, I mean but that's okay I think like I think they see that we're putting in the work with um, asking the mentors and mentees and, and figuring out what works for the users so as long as they and by the way our, our customers are companies that pay to um, be involved in the program and to put mentors in the program and everything. So as long as they see that we're um, developing the program in a way that's user-centric, then I think they're happy. And um, this next one is going to be for Aki and for Sophie. So what community or avenue do you use to promote your brand? Um, do you use social media or anything along those lines? So and. Starting, I actually we started going to farmers markets every weekend. We would bake like hundreds of cupcakes and just put our name out there. But then after that, I realized that e-commerce was the way. So having people place online orders, or we even launched our app last year so that it would be more convenient for people to place orders. And basing it off that was like a, a great step in, in getting our name out there. And then can Google Analytics, getting people put, to like write reviews and responding with keywords so that when you do the Google search for vegan cake San Antonio or gluten-free cake San Antonio, we'd be on the top of the page. And then of course, social media, Facebook, Instagram, but I feel that the Google optimization was really helpful in growing our business. We're pretty early on for this, so we, we've been very, I guess, um, invested in the, the program development itself and less so in like the marketing component from a social media perspective at least. Um, and so a lot of what we rely on is that word of mouth and the, um, the um, what it, cyclical nature, I guess, or um, kind of like the exponential nature of having um, happy customers or happy users that then draw in others and uh, help spread the word. So um, that's what we've really focused on. And then now we're starting to move into that social media um, phase where we're doing a little bit more there and just trying to keep people informed about the business side of STEM use as well as the um, programmatic side and just we figure that it's kind of fun to follow along in our, our entrepreneurial journey um, and are putting that out there a little bit um, and, and we use LinkedIn for that too as kind of an appropriate platform for us. 
Yeah, LinkedIn does make a lot of sense for you. I love that. Um, all right, so it sounds like each of you have done some really impactful things to build communities for your brand. Is there one thing that you've done that stands out that has been extremely impactful for you? Um, I think for me, the biggest thing is just putting myself out there. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I found that helps me is going to patient advocacy events, um, just getting myself ingrained into the community where like it's not just supporting other other things that are kind of aligned with what I'm doing so that it's like I meet more patients there, I get to talk with more patients casually and just get to know them on a personal level. Um, that's really kind of helped me to grow my community, to have more patients to talk to, to validate you know what I'm doing, to validate that the gap exists there. Um, and beyond that as well, like beyond just like speaking to patients, I think it's also just talking to um, LinkedIn searching, like just searching for different people that um, are in the tech world or in the VR world that you know maybe are you know pretty big in that world and just reaching out. Like I think nothing. The worst thing you can say is no. The worst thing they can do is blow, blow you off. Um, but I think that, you know, really being self-assured enough to be like, this is the opinion that I need, so I'm going to go get it, you know. So I think that's, that's one of the things I've really had to grow into as an entrepreneur and be able to grow that skill set. And that's really been a big part of my, my growing in my community. Yeah, and for, for me, especially growing in the community, it was, it was, it was a lot of networking uh, and talking First of all, just talking to the kids' charities because even their events and baking for their events was a big deal because they were reaching so many people. And then from there, it was the customer community is the biggest thing for me too because one customer will buy something, then I'll get a text and it'll be like, I had your cake at this party, I can't wait to try another one. And it just grows from there. Um, yeah, I think for um, us, the mentorship component or like um we okay i can you repeat the question really quick because yes of course what do you think is the best thing you've done to build a community yeah. around a brand okay so um i guess we um i have actually been involved as well as my co-founder in the program itself so being your own customer being your own user to an extent um helps you really have that like internal view of um, what's going on and what could really use improvement as well as listening to the others. Um, but uh, beyond that, I think there are a lot of different programs out there, like formal programs and everything for support. So, um, for instance, the KS Foley Founders Program, and then there are plenty of other things on campus that you can tap into um, that are built for helping you find that community and that support in whatever um, realm it may be. So we've, uh, you know, really leveraged those a lot uh, and, and then been proactive. So I think like um, something as simple as being involved in like the KS Foley Slack and like just seeing the different opportunities that are posted in there or if you're able to um, get involved with Capital Factory in Austin, that's even beyond UT, and they have so many different things that people will just throw in there. So for one example, we um, saw somebody post in the Capital Factory Slack that um, there's this UX design sprint where they can pair you up with UX designers for free, and uh, we were like, oh, this is probably fake, or like, <laughs> we're no way that we would actually get into this even if we applied, but we did anyways, and then Lo and behold, now we have two UX designers who are working with us um, beyond the little sprint that they did with us. So, um, and that was just a result of me like constantly being on these these channels and looking for those opportunities and following up on them. Wow, that was amazing! How cool! Um, how do you boost engagement within your community? Um, I know that you're still building one, but how do you boost engagement with your communities? So I think a big way to boost engagement, um, and I, you know, I'm still in the development phase, so I haven't had a product yet that I'm really sending out to the community, but um, just to get awareness of it and like have the chatter, I guess, going on in the community about what I'm working on, 
um, I think is just being a self-advocate really is like what I would say is um, I think it's really hard for women specifically but I think in general people to talk about their accomplishments like what they're working on what they're doing unless someone is like so what are you working on like what is what is a startup I hear about you know but it's just taking the initiative to be like hey here's something I'm working on what do you think like here's something I'm working on tell your friends like let me know if this is something that you'd be interested in and I think that like that's such an intricate thing that we're told not to do because it seems braggy, you know. And I think we're we all have that like good girl syndrome that we grow up with of like we shouldn't be talking about ourselves. You you know we should always ask what other people are doing. But um, just bringing something up like that in a conversation, it's just so against my nature personally. But I've had to really learn how to do it a lot more and really tell people about that. Because if I don't do it, who's going to do it, right? And in the meantime, you know, this is something huge that I'm working on for in service of them, in service of helping them. So if it is selfless to bring it up, it's not something that's braggy. And I think changing that perspective in, in, in me has been pivotal in really broadcasting what I'm working on into the community. Yeah, so and for me, starting... I was just like, okay, like they bought a cake for me, next customer. But like, how many? How am I gonna get the next customer? And so I would constantly do follow up, like, hey, I hope you enjoyed your cake. I hope you enjoyed your cupcakes. If you did, please leave us a review on Google. And then I'd respond to those reviews, and then that would keep me up to date and making sure that I'm meeting like people's Google search um, like keywords. And then I, after that, I realized like that we were hitting a big market that people didn't even know existed. And so, like, I had a customer come up to me and she was like, I haven't had a cake in 15 years because no one's been able to bake for me. And I'm like, this is why I keep, like, the engagement and the reviews coming so that people know that, that we're there and able to bake for them. Um, for us, we really um, have valued the in-person component of um, creating community and bringing people together. And um, it's something that is hard to do these days. Um, to just get people to show up and to be in the same space together, but it's so valuable once when you do. Um, and so we have made a concerted effort to continue to make that a part of our programming and um, as well as though increasing accessibility by having that virtual component whenever possible. Um, so that's one big thing, but then I think on the kind of more personal level and just um, getting word out there and everything, um, I have a business card, and <laughs> just having a business card is so, it's so cool. It's like, here, take my card. <laughs> um, but we also have like a QR code on it, and I'm a huge fan of this. We have like our link tree on our QR code, so I feel like it just makes it so much easier. Like, I never do anything with people's business cards, but if I were able to actually access their LinkedIn or something from their card, um, I think that would change things. So. Um, that's something that I've been trying to make a thing. <laughs> I love that. I think Leslie has her LinkedIn on as a QR code uh, as her background. <laughs> like I think she did that for South by Southwest. Yes, I love that. Honestly, so smart. So uh, we always hear that the customer is always right. How much do the opinions of your community affect the direction of your business? Um, I think that 100% it directly affects the direction of Valor. Um, I, like I said before, I approach interviews without even telling people what I'm working on, and just let what whatever the conversation is drive like drive itself. Um, and I think you know even beyond the patient and like into just the general community, um, being an entrepreneur takes a lot of flexibility and. Um, Lack of, like lack of attachments to your baby, you know, and I think, you know, sometimes I do, I'm protective of my baby, um, I'm protective of Valor, and I'm protective of, like, my vision for it, but I think when it comes to, it's, it's not about me, it's about them, it's about the consumer, it's about what they want, you know, and I need to take the ego out of it, and um, I think just, like, if it, if one conversation gives you something that's you did not think was true, then you have to listen to that, even though it's, you know, it might make it complicated for you, it might make you have to, like, change the direction completely, like, push you off a year from development, then that's what you have to do, because if you don't, then you might come up with a product that nobody wants, 
you know? So I think that like really listening and really like, not just like, so um, there's some people that are just not gonna be able to open up in that setting. So um, providing anonymous ways for people to give feedback and many anonymous ways for people to give feedback. Like um, the more the more that you can collect and then, and then like they both said, um, like not taking it personally, taking the ego out of it and um, trying to just be objective. You're not gonna be able to listen to everybody's feedback though. There will be some things that one person is gonna have a problem with and unfortunately like they're gonna continue to have a problem with it because you cannot cater your company to every single need or desire. Um, but overall, like it is, it's good to take the collective feedback and even take a scientific approach and um, you know test hypotheses based on what the like general um, feedback that you're getting is. Try something some way, see how it goes, and then you know like um, refine as necessary based on additional feedback. <laughs> All right, and Zoe, okay, this one's for you. Have you had a point where you needed to find a new community on your journey? Um, yeah, I think I think that um, finding new communities, not replacing old ones, but constantly on the search of like new people, new perspectives, is definitely a big thing when you're an entrepreneur. Um, I think like coming as a coming in as a uh, neuroscience CMS major, I knew nothing about technology. I knew nothing about VR. I tried it one time before I tried before I started my business, and I needed a lot of different perspectives. And um, I think at first I talked to the patient, I talked to the caregivers, the family members, but really penetrating the tech market was something I really had to do and figure out how to do as a CMS major. Um, and get in those rooms. Um, so I think that was definitely a big thing for me to like shift my perspective from the patient and, and keeping the patient, but also venturing beyond that and entering new communities and adding all these different perspectives and different backgrounds into my sort of toolbox that I could kind of have mentors in each sort of area to call upon that could give me insight into whatever question I have that I don't have expertise in. Yeah, so when I started again, I was I went to farmers markets. I was like, this is going to be an in-person thing, and then until I can find my own storefront. But <laughs> investing in a storefront's a lot of money, so uh, I realized e-commerce was the best way to go, and that's that way I could even reach more people that were looking for this. Because going to farmers market, only a handful of people would actually be like trying it, especially with dietary restrictions. Like they're not going to think, oh, like a dietary restriction friendly like bakery is going to be tabling the, the same, you know? And so really sh shifting my focus to be digital and online. That's so smart. And then this one's for all three of you. Um, who is someone you are inspired by or look up to in your communities? Um, so my my inspiration through everything that I do for Valor is my dad. He has guided me to be the person that I am. Um, and whenever I do anything for Valor, I always have him, his voice in the back of my head. Um, because I did it, I started it for him. And I, I, you know, as a daughter of someone struggling through what I'm trying to, the struggle that I'm trying to prove, um, I, I always call back the feelings that, you know, I've had as a caregiver, the feelings that I perceive that he has as my father. and. Um, and also just like in general, the, like the person that he was always wanted me to be and all the values that he's instilled in me and the strength and valor, if you will, that he has had throughout his journey that really just inspires me every single day within and out of my business. Yeah, so for me, besides my family, I look up to this baker, Candace Nelson. She runs Sprinkles Cupcakes and she is a national known brand now and she came up with the idea of the cupcake ATM. I thought that's amazing. And so I want to be a national brand at some point, like Uggies all over USA. Um, and like have a, like a really cool idea come with that. And I, I look up to her and how she was able to grow her business. Um, I'm inspired by my co-founder. So she's another grad student at ET and um, is an international student and has um, gone through a lot to um, get here and to be um, just the incredible scientist and person that she is. And um, I think because of our 
um, our mutual respect for one another. We're able to have a really um, positive working relationship, and um, and it it really helps to have that she happens to be my inspiration. I guess. <laughs> Uh, that's amazing to feel into our very co-founder. Um, also, Candace Nelson created Pizana, right? Now she's like doing pizza, pizza restaurants as well. She's on a roll. Um, well, I wanted to ask each of you, what has your experience um, being a part of the founder community been like? Yeah, um, I have loved it. I think that um, I, I took, I'm in the founder community, just like the broader Kendra Scott Valley community has been excellent in like connecting me with other like-minded women, other start startup founders that, you know, can help one, like the mentors that guide us, but also just like the community of, of women that can advocate for each other, you know, like I, how I mentioned the, like we all kind of, I feel like fall into that good girl syndrome where we don't self-advocate and there's also I think this bond that we have with all of the biases of like doing a startup in a, a primarily male dominated industry you know and um, kind of binding together through that and getting and sharing our experiences and um, I think that's that's a big community that we have at our disposal that has been wonderful um, and the mentors have been amazing through this and yeah it's, it's been awesome. So for me, joining the founder program has been helpful in more ways than one. So uh, my big goal to go national, but that takes one step at a time. And so they were able to connect me with the right mentors. I was connected with Nicole. She was she started Sour Babes, and she also it's like a ice cream company that also caters to vegan and gluten free people. And she was able to get her products all over H E B. And so she's like she's been helpful and. Yeah, uh, helping me move my business and so now we're, we're starting in Austin next fall and I'm very excited and then even through that I was able to apply for like grants through their resource through the founder resources and they connected me to mentors that, that are going to help me like make the, get the name brand out there and stuff so it just the connections I've gotten from the founder program have been amazing yeah, um, for me it was in part just even before I was a part of the program, um, the support that it provides by hosting these types of workshops and everything, and um, just even like encouraging women to think about entrepreneurship and like to, to consider making your idea um, an actual business. So I feel like if I hadn't um, been aware of the founder program and the um, presence and the community around um, entrepreneurship here at UT, not just through KS Valley, but beyond as well, um, I very well might not have been felt inclined to actually um, create a business. So that was hugely foundational for us. And then also, of course, as part of the founders program, we had some incredible opportunities arise. Um, we were able to um, win a grant, and that has been hugely helpful with um, the in the mentorship that came along with that. Um, and then we were able to pitch at the women's summit and um, had an incredible experience with that too. And then beyond that, um, just yeah, the different events and the um, connection to other entrepreneurs where, yeah, I'm, even as a woman in, stuff, in science and STEM, um, where we're generally like underrepresented, I have never felt more out, um, like, or, yeah, not uh, in the out group than I have um, being an entrepreneur, um, yeah. <laughs> so this has definitely helped me um, feel more at home. Well, thank you all so much for sharing tonight. I wanted to open up to the room for questions that you have. Um, your questions are welcome. Feel free to raise your hand. Yes. Hi, um, I have a question for Aki. Um, do you feel like uh, with the e-commerce that business has been booming in person as well, or do you feel that since the majority of the sales are online, it's not just like the DoorDash? Um. So we try to keep mostly online. We did try to partner like, with any DoorDash and those, but they were like it wasn't profitable to us. They were taking us the delivery. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we do our own delivery and then we'll charge based on that. But definitely e-commerce on its own as is our main market and we stopped doing the harmless markets and going in person because it was it wasn't as profitable and as useful. Makes sense, yes. I know Aki runs your business for, I think it was Hugs PC, mm -hmm. but on her core values, what core values do you two like, run your business for? Oh, that's a 
great question. Um, I think my core values, one of them is family, which really has guided a lot of what I've done. Um, another one is service. Um, another one is community, which is interesting, um, based on the founder panel that we're on. Um, and I think um, authenticity is a big one for me, which um, helps me to build those authentic relationships with the patients and has guided me to approach conversations not in sort of a money-hungry way or like with an ulterior motive, but to really just like get to know the individual and have, you know, that back and forth, you know, relationship that, that really is authentic. Um, for us, I think um, community as well as um, authenticity, but then also having um, keeping a mentee-centric view of everything, or just making sure that, like, um, at the end of the day, what we're doing is helpful to our our primary user user and um, beneficiary. I guess um, even though our customers are not going to be the mentees, um, at least for the for the foreseeable future, um, we still believe that everybody benefits when the, the mentee is kept front and center. Um, and so it, it can be awkward to tell our customers, well, like <laughs> our mentees are the ones who are choosing their mentors. You're you're putting mentors in the program, but our mentees are choosing. And but at the same time, the the relationship is gonna be better when um, the mentee is driving it. All right, and then you in the back have a question. Thank you. Um, so my question is mostly for Zoe, but if you have anything to add, please feel free to do so. I know you talked like on imposter syndrome and just you know kind of putting yourself out there, but like my question is like how can you like how can you get over the fear of being different? Because like I come, I, I'm clients working in public accounting, which is like a predominantly white industry where like clients and management are also predominantly white. So I always feel different and I always have the fear of others' perceptions. And so I'm just wondering like, how do you get over like that internal barrier? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, and first off, I'm definitely not an expert on this. I am struggling with this every single day, but I'll just give you what I kind of tell myself. Um, I, I've been in plenty of rooms where there's like older, like white men that like dominate the rooms, especially in the tech sector. So um, I can definitely resonate with that. Um, but what I would say is that being different is not necessarily a bad thing. And some people may view it as a bad thing, but I think internally realizing that what makes you different is what makes you unique and what really gives you what you bring to the table is because you're different. And I think if everybody on that table has the same perspective, then nobody's really worth anything. Like there's no value that each person brings. Your value is there because you have different perspectives, because you have a different background, because you were raised differently from everybody else at the table. That's what bring, that's what makes your voice valuable at that table. So I think really having that reflection and understanding that being different is something that's that brings you forward, that makes you better equipped to be in that room and not really something that brings you back even though maybe some people may view it that way and as long as you come in knowing that and having that confidence that you bring your like you're valuable like your perspective is valuable it doesn't really matter what anyone else thinks because once you and once you start bringing your perspective to the table they're all gonna you're not gonna care whether you're your friend okay yeah, and I love everything that you said, and just to like add on to that, like one step further is to, I mean, admit that to yourself or uh, understand that strength, and then also to be able to um, articulate it to the other people around you and say, hey, um, well, because I have the X, Y, Z experience, like I can speak on this, and um, you know, they might not have that um, that experience to be able to draw upon. Um, and so that then you're you're acknowledging your difference, which can be awkward, but at the same time it can be empowering. I just have one more thing to add. Um, I think one specific example that I've found is that women are excellent at empathizing, and that makes us really great leaders. And recently, you know, it's, it hasn't been until recently that people have really valued that about women that you know we have this extra degree of empathy. And that that hasn't been valued in leadership, 
ever. And in fact, it's been seen as a, as a weakness as that makes us like overly emotional or dramatic. But you know, all of these studies are now piling up saying that women are the best leaders because we can really empathize with the customer, we can empathize with the stakeholders, and we can, you know, that, that just really brings a different, you know, strength to the whole company as a whole. Does anybody else have any questions, any other questions? All right, do you guys have anything else that you'd like to share tonight? Okay, well, we are going to end a little bit early. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. And, and uh, we are here.